What were your impressions when you first watched Shirley's films, which I think you said you watched them at anthology? I, I had a big question. Yeah. What was uh, Shirley's contribution to your film? Shirley's mean, contribution to the film was materials, uh, materials and mm. comments and... Comments in what know, sense? Comments In the sense that, okay, we would look at conjunctions of imagery and sound, and her intention was to connect and disconnect and to use also the audio that was on the pieces of film that we found mm -hmm. and to create kind of a nightmarish, kind of almost oppressive atmosphere. That was your idea? Yeah. That she wanted to perform with it, pretty much echoing the gestures in the black and white footage that her mother shot of herself. Mm -hmm. So but she wanted it to be depressing. She wanted it to be thought-provoking, a document of the inaneness and the excess of a lot of the commercial filmmaking. Are people familiar with Shirley's work or friends of Shirley's in the room? I took a course with Shirley at UCLA. What was the course called? It was uh, actually how to make a film. I had heard Shirley was teaching that I was working in film programming at the Motion Picture Academy. And it was everyone made a one minute film. She was an amazing teacher. It was one of the only and best classes on filmmaking a long time ago, in 1983. What was the one minute film you made? It was called Framed. In a sense she was always worried about film, where it was going, what young people would get in the future from film, how history would be perceived or what she could contribute. I never heard that from her. <laughs> she was very, very concerned. Well, I only knew her for two mm -hmm. years, from 1987, well, three, 87 through 90. She seemed to be preoccupied with creating a portrait of herself through pieces of film, like using the film materials um, gathered, yes. I know that uh, Shirley Clark had Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. and it was a long, slow process. Were you aware at the time? No. no. Shirley did not, Shirley never told me anything, and when I worked with her, I found her to be fine. She was an artist, and she was That's how very, Alzheimer comes very intuitive. Quite suddenly sometimes. No, she didn't tell me. No, I didn't know. But it didn't matter to me because her voice spoke to me, and we. What year was that? Eighty-seven. And for three years we worked together. I had just finished working for two years with Jack Smith, who I worked with on his performance that he didn't complete, called *The Pirate and the Penguin*. He started the stage at Millennium. So I was very involved in learning whatever I could about mm -hmm. yeah. um, experimental avant-garde poetic film from the two of them. I did find out later that she had it when I went back, because I took a hiatus, <coughs> because I had my own paper cinema to work on. When I came back to our project, she would disappear from the hotel. So, and Wendy contacted me. She said that Shirley did not want anyone to know she had Alzheimer's. She wanted, apparently, to continue working, and she wanted to be, she wanted to communicate with people she wanted to communicate with without being prejudged as an Alzheimer's victim. She really went down the nut and last, already, when I, last conversation, she did not really recognize me at all. Three important uh, uh, women filmmakers of the period uh, went into the Alzheimer darkness, and that's Shirley Clark, Stormy Hirsch, and Joyce Billing. Three, no, no male <laughs> filmmakers that I know, uh, uh, but three women, and all three were important in the way went. I was curious if you guys can sum up really what Shirley Clark's legacy was, you know, in this movement and beyond. But uh, very important. She made, the connection is very important for the period 
to, for, to understand the period of the 60s, yeah. the connection. Portrait of Jason is one of the classics, uh, early portraits of a gay uh, personality from, you know, this is, uh, we are talking about the 60s. And of course, the, the cool world is one of the uh, first uh, narrative films dealing with the black thematic in, in Harlem, etc. And these are classics. On that Coleman, the film is not perfect, but still, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> but on that Coleman is perfect. It's also very important. Well, can you shed any light on the other group Shirley was involved with them? She started the TP video space group. She began uh, the I, I don't know years. much, but one thing I know that Shirley was one of the first to, to really work with video. You could see her everywhere mm -hmm. with her video camera when you could not see anyone else. Uh, she, joined, uh, she engaged you know, with, with a team of uh, Wendy, her own uh, daughter, and then Barbara Rubin. And she did not really compete her video. She had installation presentations at the Museum of Modern Art. Uh, you know, like, but not complete works. All that material is now uh, sitting at Anthology Film Archives. What about her uh, legacy, you know, today? I, I know Anthology did a retrospective recently, but... Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what can I say? I mean, it's... Uh, or how are you? You are part of that, or? you know, you watch it. You know as much as I know. She is not very much known. So I met Shirley, and I liked her immediately. And as I said in my introduction, unfortunately, I didn't know about Shirley, and I went to very good film and art schools. I knew about Maya Darren, I knew about Jonas, I knew about Stan Brackage. In all the eight years that I studied on and off experimental film, because I studied other things too, I had never encountered her work from any history or any professor. So this is to say, this is, I'm, I know other people experience the same thing. There is a, a stretch of time where she was not presented in film programs, her work. I don't know why. Um, I can't tell you why. 